All right. Any yes, Cameron. So my grandpa, he lives in Geist, and in his neighborhood, they have like a community dock that they can get to their boats. What would that dock kind of be called? Well, it's a good point because that's another thing I didn't mention as an appurtenant. If you own a condo, but it has a pool, you might own part of that pool in conjunction with all of the other owners. That would be an appurtenance to that condo. In that situation, it, let's say there were 10, just so we could have easy math. That, when your grandfather bought the house, he may get one-tenth ownership of the dock because he shares it with the other nine people, but that's still an appurtenance because ownership rights came with the house, but the dock is not attached to it. So that's a really good example then uh, of that, where the owner, he gets an ownership interest in a community dock. So in this particular case, he's not owning 100% of it, but he owns one-tenth, like a condo. You know, a condo, you buy the unit, but you also own part of the parking lot, part of the tennis court, part of the pool, in this case, part of the dock. So he would be in some kind of association with these other nine guys to own that property. And he probably has some sort of maintenance fee that he splits with these other nine people. Hey, we've got to paint it or clean it or, you know, reframe it or do whatever. Well, 10 of us own it. So all 10 of us have got to pony up some money to get the new dock built. There are private piers in South Carolina that are owned, same thing, same concept. Uh, there are four or five houses on the coast. A friend of mine <coughs> named Bill Stroud owns one and they have a private pier that they go out and fish on. Well, when the hurricane came through a couple of years ago, they had to rebuild it. And I remember him saying he had to pony up like eight grand as his portion because all the others had to pony up as well. Your grandfather would be the same example there. On page 21 is the air rights. We've talked about that. You can split your air rights up and you will see this in the condo sales. Now, water rights. I told you we talk about them separately. Here's a very confusing thing that a lot of people get confused. And as far as we're concerned, there are only two types of water. The first type of water is considered a river. And with the river, you get riparian rights. River, riparian. That's all that means. Now, inside of that, there are two types of rivers. And this can get confusing to some people. And I, I have heard that there are questions on the state exam that ask this type of question. All right. So there are two types of rivers. The first type of river is a river called a navigable river. Navigable, mean you can navigate down it. That decision is made by the United States Coast Guard or the Corps of Honorary Engineers, or in a court case. So there are people other than you making that decision. If it has been declared as a navigable river, like the Ohio River, your riparian rights would state that you only own to the bank of the river. Someone else owns the water and the river, like the federal government, okay? So if you can get a boat down it, you only own to the edge. The second type of river is one that is called non-navigable, meaning you can't get a boat down it. If there's no one that can get a boat down it, there is no one responsible for taking care of it, therefore, you take care of it, so you actually own to the middle, oops, to the middle of the river. So please understand and get those straight, and it kind of logically makes sense if you think about it. 
if you can get a boat down it, the government owns the water, they'll take care of it, you won't, so therefore you only own to the bank. If you can't get a boat down it, let me repeat that, if you cannot get a boat down it, no one else is taking care of it, so therefore you have to, you would own to the middle, okay? Like, and we would probably call this a stream or a creek or a brook or something like that, and then we would own to the middle. Presumably, the guy over here would own to that side, so he would take care of his half and you take care of your half, all right? So that's the first kind of water is deemed to be a river. The second type of water you will deal with is a lake. And with a lake, you have littoral rights. Lake and littoral. A lake typically is a lake, like Lake Michigan, Lemon Lake, things of that nature. The ocean is treated like a lake. In littoral rights, you only own to the water's edge. And the water's edge is defined as the average high water mark. Because tides come in, tides go down, the water may, the lake may flood a little bit, it may be dry one summer. So it's to the average high water mark or the water's edge. Okay. So there are lakes that get littoral rights. Now, retention ponds can be treated like a lake or de uh, de detention ponds. There's retention and detention in housing additions. They can be given riparian rights, even though it looks like it's a little lake. So while there are two types, the lakes and the rivers, some people can confuse them and cross them. So make sure that you understand on the deed it will explain what the rights are. Some of these retention pond and housing additions, the actual lake owners own to the middle of the lake. Whereas some of them, they only own to the edge and the retention pond is community water. And I can't remember uh, which one was which and Ross, you and I had a discussion about this. Uh, was it Lake Lemon or Raccoon Lake? your grandfather owned, somebody owned land on, because they actually have to be a landowner to use the lake. So even though it was a lake, they were given riparian rights, which says they own to the middle, so that you had to be a lake owner to, to use the lake. And it was one of those, right? You had somebody that knew that. Heritage. Heritage Lake. Heritage Lake. So even though it looks like a lake, it was actually given riparian rights to the homeowners. So we have two styles, riparian and littoral, but don't be confused that in the real world, some developer may call it one or it may look like one when it's actually given others. Those would be disclosed inside of the deed and the title work when you get it. So if you're buying a lakefront property, that is something you want to make sure you see, all right? If they're buying, oh, somebody says, I wanna be on Heritage Lake and there's nothing on the lake available, I'll buy, you know, across the street from the lake. Well, dude, that may be a big difference because you may now not get access to the water because those lake owners are getting riparian rights. You're not. All right, so keep that in mind when you start looking at riparian and littoral rights. Now, there's a couple other words in here I want you to write down in your book. Well, they're actually in your book already, so let's talk about them. Accretion. On page 22, 23. Damn eyes. Page 23, the word accretion sounds like the word increase. So accretion is an increase in your property 
because of some deposit of soil. So let's go back to the river real quick. You've got this river here, you own to the bank, all of a sudden, you know, soil starts building up in sediment, you can actually gain property. Your property size will increase, hence the word accretion. That's how I've always remembered it. You can lose property through erosion. You can lose some of your property through erosion. Thumbs up. Thank you. The other one that they've got written in there is the term called an avulsion. An avulsion is a rapid loss of real estate due to mudslide, earthquake, tidal wave, hurricane. Actually, they experienced, I, I know of two such cases where this has happened. When I lived in St. Louis in the mid 90s, the Mississippi River flooded and it was shaped like this. And it flooded and then when it came down, it actually changed the course of the river. So there was a rapid increase of real estate for the state of Missouri and a rapid loss of real estate for the state of Illinois. And it was quite ironic that the Attorney General of Illinois sued the Attorney General of Missouri because federal funds are based upon the size of your state. Well, in theory, they were going to get more funds that were going to come from potentially Illinois. Uh, I believe it was an amicable lawsuit. It was done more as a formality, not so much as a a hatred or an grievous thing, but I remember that lawsuit and then we moved away and I didn't care anymore. So I don't know what the outcome of that was. And then you had Hurricane Sandy way up in the Northeast coast. It actually changed the coastline of the property. So there were people that lived on the beach that now necessarily may not have had as much beachfront or more beachfront because the hurricane changed the coastline up there. Those would be called a rapid change or an avulsion of real estate. Now, there are a couple other terms not in your book that I need you to write down. And the first one is called floodplain. A floodplain is the land that immediately adjoins a body of water. So you've got a creek or a river, and then the land right on the edge of it would be considered a floodplain. Level areas next to waterways that are subject to flooding. And then of course, in that floodplain, you would also get flood, water, I think there's a way to do this, I'm not sure. I just did it, how did I do that? If I can write clear. Flood water would be actually the water that accumulates in the flood plain. And then the last one I want you to write down is groundwater. Groundwater is typically underground, and that's what you guys will access if you have a well. They will tap into the groundwater, and that's how farms that or houses that use wells feed the house and the water to the house is through the groundwater. Cool. Get those down, write them. Not sure what degree they are used but I do know that they are key terms. Now there's one other word in your book that can become important. And if you break it down, 
it will explain itself. The doctrine of prior appropriation. Doctrine is a law or a rule. Prior means before we've already done it. And appropriation means we are taking it from you. We are appropriating it. So it is a rule that they have prior taken the water. It is called the doctrine of prior appropriation. Some states use this doctrine with their water. Indiana does not use this, by the way, but some states do. And if you think mainly a lot of the arid states, New Mexico, Nevada, Montana, uh, Colorado, all of those states where the river water becomes important to sustain the life. And I cannot remember, but I believe it's Snake River that flows right into Phoenix, Arizona. They would use that as their water source. Well, that's cool, except for somebody that lives upstream goes, hey, that's my water, I'm gonna dam it up. You can't do that. You actually have to get permits to siphon water off if you want to irrigate your crops or feed your water, your cattle and things of that nature. And they can, the, they being the state, whatever state it is, controls how much water can be siphoned off that water because they use it as a main water source. You may own the land and you could physically own the bed of the river, but the actual water is owned by the state. All right. If the creek runs through the middle of your friggin' living room, it's not your water. It has been appropriated by the state. Now, there's a little section in there about coastal waters, like oceans. Remember, oceans are treated like a lake. So people go, well, we got a private beach. Well, your beach may be private, but the ocean is not, all right? And you only own to the average high water mark. So if someone is walking in the water, they are technically not on the land. I know there's land underneath that. But I meant, so even a private beach could potentially have someone swim across because the water's not private. Water's, the water's never private in littoral issues. And that's what we're talking about, owning to the high water mark of the ocean. The water is still federal water. Cool. Cameron. Is it like possible to buy like water, like a uh, like say like a lake or something like that? Like, can you actually buy just the lake? Yeah, I would say the answer to your question is yes, but the only well, the way you worded it is: is it possible? Yes, it is possible. All right, if it is a lake that is potentially owned by the condo association you would play very hard to try and get every one of those owners to sell to you because my guess is you're asking this question so that you could keep them off your lake and that's probably why no one would agree to it now 